Laurie Cardoza Moore, and this is Focus on Israel. He's one of America's most famous lawyers, a law professor from Harvard and a staunch defender of Israel. Although a lifelong Democrat, he is often at war with his party on their foreign policy views, anti-Israel and anti-Semitic rhetoric, and leftist extremism. On our program today, you'll hear from a truly rare and courageous individualist. Hello, and thank you for joining me today on Focus on Israel. Like most Americans, I began to ask a lot of questions about what happened to our country following 9-11. As I read and talked to experts, the issues of radical Islam and the attacks on America and Israel became extremely personal to me. I realized that Israel is facing threats from nearly every corner, from Iran's nuclear weapons program, from terrorist groups such as Hamas, Hezbollah, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS. I also saw how much of the world is against the Jewish state. The UN and the world continue to demand the creation of a Palestinian state, a terrorist state on Israel's doorstep. Now we see a rise of global anti-Semitism with threats from every corner, as it seems we're heading closer to the biblical prophecy of Armageddon in the Middle East. So if you're a Christian, why should you care? Many Christians believe that as the Jews rejected Jesus, then God has rejected them. This replacement theology is growing as many Christians believe they have replaced the Jews in God's prophetic plan. If you truly believe the Bible is the word of God, then you know that when he speaks of Israel, he is speaking about the land of Israel and the Jewish people, not the church. The mission of this series and PJTN is to educate and equip you so that you can share this truth with your family and friends. On our program today, you'll meet and hear from Alan Dershowitz, one of America's most distinguished lawyers who is known for his work in U.S. constitutional law, American criminal law, and for his often controversial political views. Mr. Dershowitz is the author of several books about politics and the law, including Reversal of Fortune, Inside the Von Bulow Case, Chutzpah, Reasonable Doubts, The Criminal Justice System, and The O.J. Simpson Case, The Case for Israel, Rights from Wrongs, A Secular Theory of the Origins of Rights, and The Case for Peace. His most recent works include The Case Against Impeaching Trump, Guilt by Accusation, The Challenge of Proving Innocence in the Age of Me Too and Cancel Culture the latest attack on free speech and due process. As a law professor, he taught at Harvard Law School from 1964 through 2013 and is a regular media contributor, political commentator, and legal analyst. He is also a strong supporter of Israel and a prominent voice on the Arab-Israeli conflict. Uh, Israel ended its occupation completely in 2005. That's untrue. And between that's 2005 untrue. That's untrue. That's untrue. and 2007. That's disingenuous. No, it's absolutely uh, uh, true. Well, let me okay. respond. Okay. Why is it? Hang on, respond. Hang on, Alan. Well, well no, ahead, Alan. We're, we're not talking about now. We're talking about 205, 207. And by the way, if that was the policy, then we'll never get a two-state solution because Israel will always have to have some military presence in the West Bank as a security border. That is an unconditional requirement for Israel's success. Both of your speakers have very short memories. They forget that in 2000, 2001, Israel offered to end the occupation, to create a two-state solution. Arafat said no. In 2007, Olmert offered to end the occupation, create a two-state solution. Abbas did not respond. You have to remember that Israel has, since 1948, favored the two-state solution. 
I want that. Yeah, but Hamas said Alan, no, ahead, Peter. No, two weeks ago, no. Two military occupation can continue until the military threat is over. That is clear okay. under international. Okay, well, Alan, Alan, but Alan, okay, so now you're at least conceding the fact that there is a military occupation. A moment ago, you were not. There is no and, military and, occupation the, in Gaza. There is Alan, in the West Bank. Alan, and, Don't put words in my mouth, and, and please. To, and the, the, region. The, the Israelis left the settlement. Left the settlements. They left hot houses, greenhouses. They could have built a beautiful, beautiful state. Instead, they turned to rockets, they turned to tunnels, they used all of their resources not to feed their residents, not to help their residents, but to build tunnels and to build rockets to try to destroy Israel's right to exist. That's this reality. Is, this you is, cannot paint that in a more positive yeah, light. Yeah, but then, Alan, how come the... He strongly criticized Barack Obama on his foreign policy stance toward Israel after the United States abstained from voting on the United Nations Security Council resolution 2334, which condemned Israel for building Israeli settlements in Judea and Samaria. He has said, I will not be a member of a party that represents itself through a chairman like Ellison and through policies like that espoused by John Kerry and Barack Obama. When former U.S. President Jimmy Carter published the book, Palestine, Peace Not Apartheid, in which he argues that Israel's control of Palestinian land is the primary obstacle to peace, Dershowitz challenged Carter to a debate at Brandeis University. Of course, Carter declined due to his inability to defend his anti-Semitic claims. In his 2015 book, The Case Against the Iran Deal, Dershowitz argues that the supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, has urged the Iranian military to have two nuclear bombs ready to go off or you're not Muslims. On civilian casualties, he has said in the age of terrorism, when militants don't wear uniforms, don't belong to regular armies, and easily blend into civilian populations, civilian casualties should be re-examined in terms of a continuum of civilianality. In one example, he writes, there is a vast difference, both moral and legal, between a two-year-old who is killed by an enemy rocket and a 30-year-old civilian who has allowed his house to be used to store Katusha rockets. In 2006, Dershowitz wrote a series of articles defending the conduct of the Israel Defense Forces during the 2006 Israel-Lebanon conflict. There was an international outcry at the time regarding escalating Lebanese civilian deaths and the destruction of civilian infrastructure, resulting from Israel's push to weaken or destroy Hezbollah. After the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Louise Arbor, indicated that Israeli officials might be investigated and indicted for possible war crimes, Dershowitz labeled her statement bizarre, called for her dismissal, and wrote about what he called the absurdity and counterproductive nature of current international law. In an op-ed several days later in the Boston Globe, he argued that Israel was not to blame for civilian deaths. Israel has every self-interest in minimizing civilian casualties, whereas the terrorists have every self-interest in maximizing them on both sides. Israel should not be condemned for doing what every democracy would and should do, taking every reasonable military step to stop the killing of their own civilians. Mr. Dershowitz has received numerous awards for his work, including the William O. Douglas First Amendment Award from the Anti-Defamation League, the Soviet Jewry Freedom Award by the Russian Jewish Community Foundation, and the Menachem Begin Award of Honor by the Menachem Begin Heritage Center. He has also been awarded honorary doctorates in law from Yeshiva University, the Hebrew Union College, Monmouth University, University of Haifa, Syracuse University, and bar Ilan University. For our award-winning documentary, Boycott This, host Brad Stein sat down for an exclusive interview with Mr. Dershowitz. In the interview, he talks extensively about the BDS movement and the many lies and repeated disinformation the world uses against the only democracy in the Middle East, Israel. Um. I wanted to start with your expertise, which is law, because we have a lot of people who have uh, rabbis who have historical mm -hmm, mm -hmm. knowledge and certainly rab uh, rabbinical and Judeo 
traditional knowledge uh, as far as precedence for the land and so forth along that line. But one of the things that constantly have been uh, mentioned was uh, international law is used, uh, uh, or, and maybe you can clarify this for me. Supposedly a number of uh, countries have signed on to say and agree that they have breached uh, international law as far as an occupying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, nation, so on and so forth. Well, I felt like as a lawyer that would be mm -hmm. something we need to clear up. If Israel has in fact broken a international law, that needs to be addressed. If they haven't, mm -hmm. we need to know. But there should be a concise answer to that. I'm hoping you can help me and give me that. Israel's occupation is completely lawful. Uh, any country is entitled to occupy an enemy country that is using its boundaries to attack. Take, for example, the Golan Heights. Israel captured the Golan Heights in a defensive war against Syria. It would be absurd for Israel to give the Golan Heights back to who? To, to Assad? To ISIS? And it would be used as a battleship mm. from which to launch rocket attacks. Israel was perfectly entitled to maintain its occupation in the Gaza Strip. Look what happened when it ended its occupation. Mm. Thousands and thousands of rockets. An occupation under international law can continue until all belligerency ends. And nobody can look you in the eye and say that Palestinian belligerency against the nation state of the Jewish people has ended. Now, you want to talk about occupations that are unjust. Mm. Let's talk about China's occupation of Tibet. Mm. Let's talk about Russia's occupation of Königsberg. Let's talk about the Turkish occupations. Let's talk about the dozens and dozens of other occupations that the BDS movement ignores. Mm. It's not comparable. Israel's claim for a continued military occupation of the Gaza, the Golan, and the West Bank is far superior in international law than any other current occupations. Mm -hmm. So what we're talking about here is the BDS movement. No. What does that stand for? Bigoted double standard. Okay. That's what BDS is all about. It's bigoted because it focuses only on the nation state of the Jewish people, and it applies a double standard right. to the nation state of the Jewish people. The BDS movement is not a liberal or progressive movement. It, BDS violates all the progressive and liberal values that we stand for. BDS is collective punishment. So the BDS movement is immoral and illiberal. I challenged Stephen Hawking, mm -hmm. who supports the BDS movement, to debate me. He can't accept the debate because the machine that he uses to talk with was manufactured in Israel. So he can't have a debate about BDS, supporting BDS, while using techniques that were developed in Israel. If people really want to support the BDS movement, they have to give up their cell phone. They have to give up uh, many of the pharmaceuticals that save lives. I take every day pharmaceuticals that are manufactured and developed in Israel. So in addition to being a double standard and bigoted, the BDS movement is hypocritical. Nobody is going to boycott Israeli products that help them and make their mm. lives better. Obviously seems a little bit unfair <laughs> or, yeah, I mean, there's some, something else going right. on here that right. makes no right. sense. The General Assembly of the United Nations has issued more declarations against Israel than all the rest of the nations in the world combined. As Abi Ibn put it, literally, uh, almost 50 years ago, if Algeria introduced a resolution at the General Assembly that the earth is flat and that Israel flattened it, it would win 126 <laughs> to 48 with 23 abstentions. We know exactly who would vote for it and who would vote against it. It's a knee-jerk annual parade of hate directed against the nation state of the Jewish people and only the nation state of the Jewish people. Let's go back to one particular year in history, 1975. In that year, millions of Cambodians were being murdered by Pol Pot. It was one of the worst genocides since the end of the Second World War. Not a single resolution hmm. condemning Pol Pot or the Cambodian genocide. And the UN spent its year having a resolution comparing Israel and Zionism to racism. Hmm. Or take modern times when Syria is falling apart. Hundreds of thousands of people are being killed, millions displaced. Hard to find any resolutions condemning Assad, condemning ISIS, but you find resolutions repeatedly condemning Israel. Every time Israel adds a bathroom to a house in a settlement on the West Bank, it gets condemned. 
No matter how many barrel bombs Assad drops, very hard to find real condemnation. The biggest apartheid, that was, a, that was brought up all the time. This is an apartheid state. We have checkpoints. We can't come through here. We don't have access to the same things that Israel is. This is, should be, and of course the BDS movement seemed to be effective in South Africa, so they're mm -hmm. trying to make an equivalency there. Can you talk to the sure. apartheid state? There is absolutely no analogy between uh, Israel and apartheid South Africa. In apartheid South Africa, a small number of whites dominated the country. Blacks couldn't vote, had no access to the judiciary, were selectively uh, executed. Um, whereas in Israel, Arabs vote, uh, they serve on the Supreme Court, they serve on universities. Yes, there is an occupation, a military occupation. And if you want to see what it looks like to end the occupation, look at Gaza. Mm -hmm. And Gaza, the occupation ends, and thousands of rockets and terror tunnels are built from Gaza to kill Israelis. International law does not require a country to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require a country to give up an occupation as long as there is a belligerency. I want to take you to Israel in pictures and film. I want you to see how God's sovereign hand can be seen before our eyes right here in this land. That's why PJTN is offering a special anniversary package that includes a captivating new book and award-winning DVD. Israel Rising is a unique visual story of Israel's miraculous journey from unforgiving desert to thriving nation. Thousands of years ago, the prophet Ezekiel foretold a future time in which the arid land of Israel would come alive for its people. Now this breathtaking book documents the fulfillment of this vision as rarely seen photographs from the 1880s to the 1940s are juxtaposed with recent photos of the same locations. This book will inspire and captivate you as it illuminates Israel's foretold awakening in a new and unforgettable way. In addition, you'll receive the award-winning documentary, Israel Indivisible, The Case for the Ancient Homeland. This inspiring film examines the many political twists and turns that make Israel the world's most controversial nation. From Abraham and the Promise to the issues facing the Jewish state today, the film examines the historical, archeological, legal, and biblical foundations for the modern state of Israel. This is a limited time offer for these two remarkable resources for just a one-time gift of $70 today. Your generous donation will help ensure that PJTN stays on the front lines and in the headlines of all the important issues facing Israel and our Jewish brethren. So please go to PJTN.org today. From studying history, it's very clear that what starts with the Jews never ends only with the Jews we must strongly stand against any anti-Semitic trends. For if not stopped, they'll cause harm to all of us, and we'll witness the downfall of our Judeo-Christian Western culture. Today, many people say there's no longer a need for a Jewish state, that Jews around the world no longer need a place of refuge. But anyone who has heard recent statistics about the worldwide rise in anti-Semitism would never make such a claim. The reality is that neo-Nazi groups and Nazi sympathizers are increasing around the world. Surveys show that over one billion people in the world harbor anti-Semitic attitudes. Close to 50% believe that Jews have too much power in the business world, and two-thirds of the world's population has never heard of the Holocaust, or believe the historic accounts of it are inaccurate. Don't let yourself be manipulated by evil people with a wicked agenda. When the self-serving villains are in control, good people from all religions suffer. Muslims, Christians, and all people of conscience should stand proudly and show respect for a country that gives so much to the world in so many ways. Do your part, do your research, and do what you can to make a difference because what happens in Israel does affect us all. This is not just a Jewish or just an Israeli problem. This is a problem for all humanity, for each and every one of us who believe in freedom and human rights. Learn more about what you can do at pjtn.org. You have to care about Israel because if you don't care about Israel, What's happening in Israel is coming to a theater near you. 
terrorism in Israel goes way, way beyond the occupation. There was terrorism in Israel in 1929. Uh, there was terrorism in Israel in the 1930s. There was terrorism in Israel between 1948 and 1967. The PLO was established before any occupation or any civilian settlements. So to argue that the settlements or the occupation caused terrorism is to get the facts backwards. It's terrorism that causes the continuation of the occupation. When the Palestinian leadership and people want their own state more than they want to see the end of the nation state of the Jewish people, there will be a two-state solution. Mm. Were they called Palestinians then? I don't even know what they were called. We are all, well, the Canaanites. This is the land of Canaan, and Canaan is an Arabic word, and, uh, and the old... Palestine, Palestine, is Palestine a, 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 an Arabic word? I don't know the difference. Well, Palestine, is, it's, well, it may be, it's thousands, of years, it's thousands of years old, you know. So your people, Palestinians, have been here how many... We've been here from the time of Adam and Eve. Israel has extended the life of Palestinians on the West Bank. They have a much higher life expectancy than Arabs in other parts of the world. They have much more freedom of expression, freedom to criticize than Arabs and Muslims in other parts of the world. And the objective evidence demonstrates that many benefits have accrued to the Palestinians, including political nationalism. Remember, the Palestinians never regarded themselves as a people in 38. They went to the Peel Commission and said, we're not a people, we're part of southern Syria. Many of the Jewish supporters of the BDS movement against Israel hate America. They hate America, they hate Western values, they're hard, hard, hard leftists. Uh, nothing Western is, is good. Uh, they hark back to old tropes of colonialism and, and, and that kind of 19th century uh, history. Um, and you, you scratch an anti-Israel person deep enough and you'll find an anti-American, anti-Western. You scratch some of them deep enough and you will find anti-Semitism. Not all, mm -hmm. but you'll find it among some. It is irrational to single out Israel for the kind of BDS or opprobrium that is now directed against it. There is no rational basis for singling out Israel. And so you have to ask yourself, why are so many people acting irrationally and that's a question more for psychiatrists than for political analysts. <laughs> okay. How is it not possible for people to simply show the truth and, instead of the propaganda and sort of force people to have to deal mm -hmm, with mm -hmm, their, mm -hmm. their obvious bias? Why it's, does that not happen internationally? It's a far better story for the media to show refugee camps and slums than to show beautiful buildings in Ramallah, beautiful buildings in Jericho, uh, nice areas of, of Bethlehem. And so the media tends to focus on the refugee camps without mentioning that the only reason there are refugee camps is because the Palestinian leadership insists that they remain as festering saws to build up antagonism, to create uh, terrorism. Uh, they could end these refugee camps in a minute, uh, complicitous in this in the United Nations. These are the only refugees who have been kept in camps for close to 70 years now. The time has come to end these refugee camps, to integrate Palestinians into the mainstream of the West Bank and other areas. They are political pawns being used by the Palestinian leadership and by opponents of Israel to maintain a festering saw and to maintain opposition to the nation state of the Jewish people. The BDS movement is driven by people who are opposed to the existence of Israel as the nation state of the Jewish people. The head of the BDS movement has said that he does not support the two-state solution. He supports a one-state solution and that what state would be a Muslim state, Palestine, which would become a haven for ISIS and other terrorist groups. So its goal is to destroy the nation state of the Jewish people. <laughs> Israel represents a desire by the Jewish people to have a homeland of their own, having experienced horrible anti-Semitism in Europe, culminating in, in the Holocaust. Um, Israel, which was founded well before the Holocaust, uh, at least the, the areas of Israel that became part of Israel, uh, became home to the Jewish people. And every people is entitled to a home. There is only one home the Jewish people have. There are multiple homes Muslims have, multiple homes Arabs have, 
multiple homes many other ethnicities and religions have. The Prime Minister of Israel has as his or her responsibility preserving the nation state of the Jewish people hmm. um, uh, and preserving the safety of the citizens of Israel. On balance, I think Israel deserves praise, not condemnation, hmm. for the way it's responded to these challenges over the past nearly 70 years. It's the only country in the world where disagreement over policy results in a call for economic capital punishment. Hmm. So criticize Israel if you are critical of its policies, but don't overstate it and mm -hmm. don't call for sanctions to be directed only against the nation state of the Jewish people. There is a name for that and mm. it's called bigotry. Mm. You have to look at the whole country and Israel's human rights record is superb compared to other countries. I challenge any of your viewers to name a single country in the history of the world faced with threats comparable to those faced by Israel that has ever had a better record of human rights, a higher compliance with the rule of law, and more concern to protect the lives of civilians. You cannot name a single country because there is none. Hmm. And to single out the best and condemn it as the worst tells us more about those doing the condemning than it does about those who are being condemned. Well, that's our program for today. And I want you to know we appreciate your support. The time to take a stand is now. Be a leader in your community and in your church. One person can make a difference. Get involved with and support pro-Israel organizations such as PJTN. Call your senators, congressmen. Let your elected leaders hear from you. Visit our website to learn more. Sign up to receive action alerts and order our films to share with family and friends. Please encourage everyone you know to tune in and become informed. God bless you, and thank you for all you do on behalf of our Jewish brethren in all Israel. We'll see you next time on Focus on Israel. To support this program, send your tax-deductible gift to Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, P.O. Box 682711, Franklin, Tennessee, 37068. You can also support PJTN online. Visit PJTN.org or call 1-877-873-9020. Anti-Semitism has reached epic proportions and Israel is now surrounded by nations who seek its destruction. For Israel to lose just one battle would mean losing everything. As Christians, it is our biblical responsibility to stand with our Jewish brethren and Israel. PJTN needs your help to reach more Christians with this urgent message. Please visit our website to become a member today and order our award-winning documentaries. You must decide that you won't be silent. Sign up now at pjtn.org. God bless you and thank you for your support and prayers.